Hey guys, welcome to another Gaging Gadgets Garmin review video. In this video, I'll be doing a comparison between the Garmin Forerunner 245 here on the left and then the Garmin Forerunner 45 on the right side. Both these watches are fairly new. They came out this year. Currently, the Garmin 45 is priced around $200 and it does come in two different sizes. This being the normal size and the other being a little bit smaller and that's the 45S. The Forerunner 245 is a $300 watch and if you have the music version like this one, it is $350. And check the description I'll have links down there so please use those links if you'd like to support me when buying these on Amazon. The goal of this video is to show you all the differences between these two watches including the design, the different menus, activities, different features that are available between the watches. To save time I won't go over many of the features that both watches have but I will be going over the differences and different features that the 245 has over the 45 or vice versa. So let's go ahead and get started with the design and look of this watch. The 45 on the right here is going to be a little bit smaller, even if you have the larger version, than the 245, as you can see. So the actual face of the watch will be a little bit smaller, and then as you can see, the display is a lot smaller. You can kind of see it in there. It sits a lot smaller than the display on the 245, and it is a lower resolution, so that makes it a little bit harder if you're going to be reading text messages on the watch, things like that. They just come through clearer on the 245. Additionally, with the design, you have nice stainless steel buttons on the 245 where the buttons on the 45 are going to be made out of a plastic material and they feel a little bit cheaper and the bezel of the watches are different as well the bezel on the 245 is made out of a polycarbon material kind of like a carbon fiber and the bezel of the 45 is just made out of a plastic so I would think that the 245 plastic on the bezel will be a little bit stronger, probably last longer. Also, the glass on the display is going to be a Gorilla Glass Type 3, where on the 45 it's still a strength in glass, but it's not going to have that brand name or reputation behind it. So that could be pretty important there. Moving to the backs of the watch, as you can see, the watch bands are going to be different. The 245 has quick release bands, very easy to remove them and then attach them. So if you bought other bands, you could really easily change those out. They also are the exact same watch bands as many of the other watches including the 945 and the Phoenix watches so there's tons of different bands out there that you can buy. Now with the 45 it's actually a very unique band for this watch so there's not going to be as many versions available but you also need a tool to remove it so it's just a little bit harder to remove. Now when looking at the heart rate sensors and then the battery connectors for charging they're exactly the same so no difference there. Another difference is going to be the width. The 245 is going to be a little bit thicker as you can see. The bands are also a little bit different, I don't know if you could see, but the 245 is just a little bit longer than the 45. Now when it comes to all those differences in size, there is a little bit of weight difference, with the 45 being 2 grams lighter than the 245, and if you have the 45S, it's going to be 5 grams lighter than the 245. In my opinion, both are good looking watches, I enjoy wearing them, and I think they look great. Now while I haven't had any issues with the size or the bulk of either of these watches, but one difference I do have with my experience is I don't have any issues with my hand falling asleep while I'm sleeping. So with the 245 or even the Instinct, I would have my left hand fall asleep. That's the one I wear my watch on. But with the 45, I've never had that issue. I've never woken up and had my had to take off my watch or anything like that. And I think that's because of this permanent bend in the watch band. But that's just something I've experienced. All right, so now that we've taken a closer look at the look and design of these watches, there are several different colors available, so I recommend checking those out. Let's get into the actual menus and the settings for these watches. So the first item we'll discuss in the settings is just going to be customizing the watch face right here, since that's the thing you'll be seeing most on these watches. So as you can see on the 45 here, you actually only have the option to change the accent colors on the built-in watch faces. You have no way of actually customizing the data that's on them or any of the other aspects such as the layout, removing the seconds because that can save battery life, and then like I said, tons of data options on there as well, and then including the background color. So you're very limited when it comes to customizing the built-in watch faces, but you can still download third-party watch faces on the 45. That's actually the only available download for this watch is going to be watch faces. It's not compatible with any of the widgets, the apps, or the data fields that are available on Garmin Connect IQ, where you can get all those things on the 245. Another thing that's missing from the watch face on the 45 is going to be the sunrise sunset. I found that to be pretty important, so I was a little bit disappointed that that was not included on the 45. So just some, another thing to note. 
So when it comes to widgets, which are basically just the data screens that you can see if you just go up or down from the watch face, so things such as health stats or your steps, heart rate, different things like that, those are gonna be your widgets. Both watches will have very similar widgets available with the 45 only missing the verb controls. So verb is a camera from Garmin and you will not have the ability to control it with the 45. So that's just one thing missing from the 45. So now that we've talked about the watch faces and widgets, let's get into the settings and we can talk about the differences there. So now that we're in the settings, I do want to talk about some of the main feature differences between these two watches. Both watches will have incident detection and Garmin assistance. They will also both have Garmin coach. So if you're trying to learn how to do a 5k, a 10k, or a half marathon, those will be helpful for you. Additionally, both of these watches have heart rate monitors, but one thing missing from the 45 is going to be the pulse ox sensor, and that is available on the 245. And that'll just measure your blood oxygen levels. Additionally, the 245 will have Wi-Fi, and that allows the watch to actually actually sync with Garmin via Wi-Fi. So you don't need to have connection to your phone. You don't need to connect it to your computer. It'll sync to Garmin via Wi-Fi and upload all your stats. That can allow it to do it a lot quicker, download updates faster, and also download satellite data for GPS, which means it'll sync faster with the GPS. Now, another difference with the 245 is going to be that it does have a music version where you can fit up to 500 songs on the Forerunner 245. So you don't have to bring your phone with you if you want to listen to music while you're on a run or a hike, anything like that. It also is compatible with Spotify where it will actually sync your playlist and podcast from Spotify, download those to the watch and keep them up to date if you change the playlist in Spotify. It'll actually download and any changes that are made to that playlist. You don't have that option on the 45, but with both watches, you do have the ability to control the audio on your phone. So if you have music or podcast, Spotify, any kind of podcast app on your phone, you'll actually be able to control those with both of these watches, including the volume on the phone, which is pretty cool. Another feature you're going to have with the 245 over the 45 is the ability to actually respond to text messages from the watch. So as you can see here, if I select in on the 45, I don't really have any options other than to just view the text message. You can also see that the emoji is colored on the 245 here and it's just a black and white picture on the 45. But if I select in on the 245, I have options here. I can scroll down, I can reply to the message. I can also block the app. So if I'm getting a lot of notifications from an app and I don't want to receive those notifications, I can block it directly on the watch. But I have the option to go in here, reply, and I can send all these different messages and I can customize these to be whatever I want. And I can also include a signature so people know I am responding from my watch. So it's very cool and it's really easy to just quickly send that and it will send the text message from my phone to my wife via my watch, which is really cool. You can also respond with text messages if you receive a phone call, which is pretty cool because on both watches you can decline calls, but on the 245 you can actually send a message telling them why you declined it. So real quick, let's talk about battery life between these two watches. Both are advertised as having seven days of battery life and that's going to be in smartwatch mode, so just like this. But if you're doing an activity or using the GPS in an activity, it's going to be much less battery life. For the 45, that's going to be 13 hours of battery life. And for the 245, it's going to be 24 hours of battery life using GPS. So a significant difference there, almost double the battery life when using GPS in the 245. And I do have to say, while it doesn't seem like that much, it is very noticeable. Now I do activities just about every day, sometimes two activities. And what I found is with the Forerunner 45, I have to charge my watch every three to four days. With the 245 here, it did not seem to be as bad. I think it was probably every five to six days, even with the activities. So having that 24 hours of battery life really did help out on the 245 and limit the amount of times that I had to charge it. Now charging these is not that bad. I found it takes probably about an hour and a half to fully charge them from 0%. It's a little bit less than a minute a percent of battery life. And it's very similar between the two watches. So now that we've gone through the look and the design, the different features available, and then the battery life between these two watches, one of the most important features when buying a Garmin watch is going to be the activity tracking that's available. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the built-in activities on both of these watches, and then the different data fields and metrics that you can get from these watches while you're performing activities. So on the 45 here, you are limited in your list of activities that are built in, and it's actually controlled on your phone via the Garmin Connect app. So as you can see here, you can only have five activities that will actually be displayed on your watch. And then there are six more that are available, including other, which is kind of a catch-all. Now with the 245 here, I'll go through the list of available activities. So we have run, we have walk, yoga, trail run, treadmill, indoor track, bike, 
Pool Swim, which is something I definitely think is missing from the 45. That kind of sucks. We'll get into the more list here. We have Bike Indoor. We have Row Indoor. Walk Indoor. Strength. Cardio. Elliptical. Stair Stepper. And then Other. Additionally, on the 245, you have the ability to create your own activities. You can copy the walk activity and then rename it to Hiking. Different things like that so that you can have basically any activity you want. Whereas on the 45 here, you're extremely limited in the available activities. So now that we've gone through the available activities, let's go check out the available data screens on each of these watches. So we do that by going into the activities and then going to options. We can see data screens on the 45. And then on the 245 here, we would go into run settings. Now, one thing I wanna talk about real quick is you actually have navigation on the 245, which is really cool. So using GPS, you can save locations. So if you're at a trailhead, you could save that location. And then later on, you could actually navigate to that. You also have the ability to navigate to the beginning of activities or to repeat activities using the navigation on the 245. And in addition to that, you can build courses with the save locations. So say you were saving different locations on a hike or a run, you could build those into specific courses that then you could repeat whenever you wanted to. It's very cool. And I actually have a tutorial video on how that works with the 245. So check the description, I'll have that down there. But let's get into the run settings right now so we can see those data screens. So data screens are basically like this. It shows different amounts of data. So they have different types, you know, where you can see the three different data sets like this, your heart rate zone, stuff like that. You do get this really nice graphic on the 245 that shows your heart rate zone and all that kind of cool information. But on the 245, they have tons of available screens such as Run Dynamics, you have Virtual Partner, you have Map, music controls, things like that that you can add to your running screens so they'll be on your watch face while you're running. So let's go into the custom data because that's what the 45 has as well. So in here we can choose our layout. You can have up to four fields available to view on the 245 while on the 45, it's gonna be a max of three. For me, I really enjoy having the four fields, so I do find the three fields limiting. I like to have my time, my distance, my heart rate, and then maybe my altitude or something like that available. So for me, the four screens is a sweet spot, and I do miss it when I'm wearing my 45. So once we choose the screen that we want, if we want four fields, three fields, something like that, then we decide the data that we're gonna have in each of those fields on the screen. So this will be the data displayed during an activity. So on the 45, you're limited to only these options. So we have timer, distance. I'll just scroll down, I won't say all of them. You can read this. So on the 45, it's just going to be those 13 fields, unfortunately. But on the 245, you're going to have tons of options. It's a massive list. So timer fields, distance fields, Pace fields, speed fields, heart rate fields, I'm trying to go as quick as possible, save time, run dynamics. Cadence fields, temperature fields, elevation, navigation fields, and other fields. So if you're going to be doing a lot of activities on your watch and you really care about having that extra data, you're going to be able to get that out of the 245 where it's kind of lacking on the 45. So that was a quick comparison between the Garmin 245 and the Garmin 45. Hopefully this video gave you an idea of the differences in the capabilities and the features available on these watches, as well as the differences in activity tracking. For me, it is worth the extra $100 to $150 difference to get the 245 just because it has so many different great features 
and the build quality is a lot better, so it's going to be a stronger, better lasting watch. If you have any questions about the Forerunner 245 or the Forerunner 45, leave a comment below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'm going to add affiliate links to the description of this video so you can find these exact watches on Amazon. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing to my channel, Gaging Gadgets. More gadget reviews and tech tutorials. Thank you so much for watching.